It's now been a week since SCR version 2.0 was released, one of the most highly anticipated updates in the game's history and the first major update to the game in almost two years. This past week has given me time to explore the new update, looking at the new stations and various other features that have been implemented across the map. And all this exploration gave me the question, is SCR 2.0 overrated? Did it live up to all the hype and expectation? Well, in this video I'm going to find out as we dive into my SCR 2.0 update review. The first station that I want to take a look at is Rayleigh Bay, which is of course the terminus of the latest extension to the Stepford County Railway map. Rayleigh Bay consists of a ticket office, which appears to be closed, which is located inside a waiting area with benches. Just outside of this there is a large amount of cycle storage. The station itself though boasts three platforms, all with ticket barrier access. The station is served by both Connect and Express with services to and from Leighton, West Wyvern, Lynn by the Sea and Edgemead. The station is in a built up area which has been built especially for the version 2.0 update. At the end of the station platforms you can also see semaphore signals which have been introduced which I personally think is a very nice touch. Overall I think Rayleigh Bay is a pretty decent station and I feel like it suits its role perfectly and in my opinion it's based off Bradford Forster Square in West Yorkshire. So for me Rayleigh Bay scores 7.5 out of 10. Carnally Bridge is the second of the three new stations which feature as a result of the version 2.0 extension and this is a very short distance away from Rayleigh Bay. In fact, this station has just a single platform due to the fact that it is a short section of single track meaning that trains pass this station in either direction. To be honest there really isn't a lot else to say about Carnally Bridge, it's literally just a station. The surrounding scenery is quite nice I guess, but it's nothing spectacular and receives a 6.5 out of 10 from me. However, if you follow the road a short distance up from the station and stand on this bridge, you can get an excellent view of the trains coming to and from Rayleigh Bay. The third and final station which is part of the version 2.0 diesel only extension is Aslockby, which is only a short distance from Edgemead. This again is a pretty basic station with semaphore signals visible at either end of the platform. There's not really a lot here, however I do like the fact that the platforms are staggered and in addition there's a lovely old heritage signal box which has been preserved, although unfortunately no longer in use. Overall though, Aslockby only gets a 6 out of 10 from me as it's a pretty basic station. However, I'm afraid I've found a few loopholes in this extension which I'd like to show you now. The first point that I would like to make is that I think personally the scenery between Aslockby and Carnally Bridge is actually quite poor overall. This is me departing Aslockby, driving a class 195 and we go over the level crossing heading towards Connolly Bridge and you can just see these bushes and this kind of takes me back to about SCR version 1.4 days. Whilst you can see the buildings and skyscrapers in the Connolly Bridge and Rayleigh Bay area in the background, I still feel like something could definitely have been put in this area at least, I don't know, some better looking trees or anything, just to make the scenery look a little bit more interesting. In addition, whilst doing this journey I discovered that the full length of the extension is 1.73 miles from Edgemead to Rayleigh Bay, which when you think that the extension includes three stations, is actually really, really short. I have to be honest, I was extremely underwhelmed the first time I drove this extension and I still remain a little bit underwhelmed to this day. Lots of hype was generated from the sneak peeks posted in the SCR official Discord server, leading us to believe that there might actually be a big extension with multiple stations and quite a long extension at that. For this reason, I certainly believe that the extension did not live up to the hype that was generated amongst the SCR community, and that this area had the potential to be something so much bigger with a much wider little network being created, but instead we've only got a short little 3 or 4 minute extension beyond Edgemead. Which personally disappointed me quite a lot, I have to admit, having been very excited for this update. Unfortunately there is yet one more thing that I'd actually like to mention and please forgive me if I'm a little bit nitpicking and being possibly overly fussy, however on the approach to Rayleigh Bay as you're about to see in a minute, that bit of scenery I do like by the way, you can see that we have got a speed reduction to 30 miles per hour. Now because I've driven the route a few times now I know that it's there, however there's no warning of your speed reduction from 50 to 30 anywhere which makes it very difficult for drivers who are unfamiliar with the route that they need to decrease their speed because I think in real life there has to be a speed reduction warning sign on the railway if there's 
I think it's possibly 20 miles per hour or more reduction in the speed limit. There has to be a speed warning sign. So I was quite disappointed that that wasn't included. So, and there were also multiple other areas across the map where I found that there were speed warning signs missing and I can't, I can't re exactly remember where they were. However, if I do find any in the future, I will let you know. So this made me feel that actually there were possibly some bits that could still be added to this route which are not currently there, which was actually a little bit disappointing for me. As somebody who tries to drive professionally and enjoys the realism of being immersed in this rail network simulator, I find that little details that which accurately compared to real life are really important so I was a little disappointed to find features like that missing, but we digress, because there are still lots of other really good things about this update which we haven't talked about yet. The first of the really good other features in this update is of course the new variety of trains and we're currently looking at the upgraded class 170 which now brings us new variants, a two car 170 slash two and a four car 170 slash five which is two 170 slash twos doubled up. The class 357 has also been remeshed and now looks very very nice. I do occasionally drive that even if it is the new train because it does look nice. We also say hello finally to the meshed class 321 one. In addition, in this update, we also saw a class 385 and class 156 be added to the Stepford Connect fleets. There are also four car variants of both of those trains. In terms of new routes, Stepford Connect brings four new routes to the game, Rayleigh Bay to Lynn by the Sea, Edgemead, Leighton West and Leighton City, only one of which I currently own at the moment unfortunately. However, I found it ironic that the route between Rayleigh Bay and Lynn by the Sea, which is actually the longest out of all of them, was the cheapest. That's fantastic logic there from the developers. In terms of Express, the main major change is of course the introduction of the new diesel only Class 800, which brings me on to another problem which I have with version 2.0, and that is the fact that I feel this is very much a missed opportunity from the developers to implement bi-mode functionality for trains within this update. When I first saw the Class 800 in the trailer, I immediately thought that the developers were trying to tell us that there would be bi-mode functionality within this update. So when I purchased the Class 800 and found out that it was only diesel mode and no electric mode, I was actually quite disappointed because I thought the developers definitely, with an update like version 2.0, could have at least implemented bi-mode functionality. The only new route for Express is of course the Rayleigh Bay Express, with stops at Rayleigh Bay, Edgemead, West Wyvern, North Shore and Lynn by the See. In addition, the Class 43 has also been remeshed and looks absolutely lovely, so kudos to the developers for that because I think that's a really, really nice upgrade. In terms of waterline, the only new changes is of course the replacement of the Class 508 by the new electric Class 313 and the fact that the Class 319 has now finally received its mesh conversion. Also one new route for waterline between Benton and Connolly, which seems pretty pointless to me but I guess it's a nice addition. It's also worth saying that the Newry Harbour and Morganstown branches of Waterline are now diesel only and that is another feature that's been implemented across the map. No overhead electrification equipment, no electric trains. Simple and I really like that, that's another realistic feature that's been added to SCR. Now we're looking at some more stations, but this time existing stations that were already within the map, only that they have been upgraded. And the first station we're going to be looking at is Edgemead. Edgemead is a very nice looking station, a nice facelift compared to before, and now it's definitely been inspired off of Newark Northgate station on the East Coast Main Line. The station still has three platforms, however there are now more waiting rooms and more waiting shelters have been built on platforms 1 and 2. Fewer trains terminate at this station than before and that is because many trains now turn back from Leighton to go towards Rayleigh Bay using platform 1. Platforms 2 and 3 are now the ones used by passing express trains. I really like this new Edge Mead station and it's much better than the one before, therefore I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10. We've now moved one stop down the line to Faymere, which is another station which has received a minor facelift. Gone is the road bridge, now there's simply a car park and an extremely wide pedestrian footbridge. Similarly, the platforms are red. There's also lots of bicycle storage available at this station. To be honest, I don't think this facelift is the best, so I'm only going to give it 4 out of 10. However, it's certainly improvement on the original one, so I can't really complain. Not much else to say here, so let's move on. The next station which has seen an upgrade is Mill Castle. Not only has the entire town been rebuilt, but also the station entrance has been completely remodernised. There are plenty of new bridges, lifts, 
The platforms now feel much more open and the daylight is much more prominent in the station because before it was quite a dingy and dark place. Overall, I really like this upgraded Mill Castle and don't forget with longer platforms, again hinting that we might be receiving longer trains in future updates, I think this is really nice improvement, so therefore I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. The next station is West Wyvern. Now I really like the new upgrade to West Wyvern. It's now based off of Grantham Station on the East Coast Main Line in Nottinghamshire. The station now only has four platforms as opposed to it previously having five, and this is because Connect and Express now share platform one with trains to Lynn by the Sea. In addition, there's also a new first class lounge. It's always a nice touch that you can play the piano in this game. Across the footbridge we go to see the new terminating platform on platform number 3. This is once again shared by both Connect and Express, although inside the waiting shelter on this platform you get the lovely old vending machines which is a nod back to SCR's past. I'm a huge fan of the newly updated West Wyvern station and surrounding scenery and I can't really fault it so therefore I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. We're at North Shore Station now because I want to check out the newly modelled entrance, town and also first class lounge which has been inside the station. Whilst the main station building looks the same, inside it's different with the implementation of this new ticket office and there's now a first class lounge for express trains upstairs. There's not really a lot else to say other than the fact that the station has been completely redone with Stepford Express branding, the new overhead electrification equipment has been added and the platforms have been lengthened for longer trains in the future. This North Shore upgrade is nice, although it doesn't look massively different before, so therefore it only gets a 5 out of 10. We've now moved back up the line to Water Newton Station. Now, I think whilst this is a nicely upgraded station, I do think that it's a little bit confusing. Now that all four platforms are in operation, of course, the route between Leighton Stepford Road and Terminal 3 now calls here, it means there's lots of new interesting pathways which makes navigating around the station very difficult. Personally, I actually don't really like the fact that Airlink now calls at Water Newton. I preferred it when it was an express service from Leighton towards the airport, but I guess everyone's different. Therefore, the upgraded Water Newton only gets a 4 out of 10 from me. Stepford Central is another station which has received a minor facelift. Finally, the Central Mall has been demolished. It will be sorely missed. The entrance has been completely changed and there's now simply a ramp leading up from the river onto the main concourse area. There's new escalators in the station and there's also a new first class lounge up on the top level. The main other change to the station is the fact that there are now ramps leading down towards the taxi rank. And these ramps come directly from the platforms which has been designed to ease congestion in the main entrances. The platforms have been lengthened and there is now a canopy which stretches all the way to the end of the express platforms. The architecture has also received a slight upgrade within the station as there are now new pillars supporting the station roof. I personally think this is a very nice upgrade to Stepford Central Station, therefore I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. The final station to have received minor changes is Stepford Victoria. The lighting in the station has been completely changed and in my opinion it now looks so much better and more realistic. There's also the new overhead electrification equipment that's been implemented across the station and I think once again the pillars and architecture within the station has been slightly changed to make it resemble London Charing Cross even more closely. However one problem that I have with this station is that the big bright lights you can see over platforms 5 and 6 have not been implemented on both sides and I don't really know why. I just like it when things are symmetrical, however the station looks much better than before so therefore it gets an 8 out of 10. The next thing I want to do is quickly take a look at the new scenery outside North Shore Depot. This is one of the things which was sneak peeked in the SCR Discord server. As you can see, the area has been completely transformed, with the previous depot literally just being two tracks on the side of the main line, now being transformed into an entire depot where trains can start their journeys to and from Lynn by the Sea earlier in the morning and finish late in the evening. Great work there by the SCR developer team. The last and certainly not the least thing to talk about is of course the new GUI system which is one of the main things and main changes to the game which has come as a result of the version 2.0 update. GUI now looks so more slick and professional with a clear speedometer indicating your target speed, current speed limit, train number, route and finally the colour and distance to the next signal which I think will be a really helpful feature for new drivers. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to resume my SCR route learning series where I teach you all how to drive professionally in the game. And just like that, that's all the major features of SCR version 2.0 covered. Now it's time for me to draw my overall conclusions. At the beginning of the video, I alluded to the fact that I believed that this update was overrated and that I was personally underwhelmed with it. 
However, do I still think that after all the good things about this update that I've shown you in this video? Well, I have to be honest, the answer is yes. My overall conclusion about version 2.0 is that it's a good update. However, I still think there are plenty of things that could have been added which were missed opportunities which would have made it much better. For a start, I personally believe that the extension is, to be honest, too short. Whilst I wasn't expecting there to be loads and loads of stations, I still think it would have been nice to have the stations spread out a little bit more, rather than just over half a mile between each of the stations, which is not a lot of driving time. Secondly, I also stated that some of the scenery between Aslockby and Connolly Bridge stations is quite poor, and I still stand by that fact. The scenery is very bland because of the old bushes, and this takes me back to the days when SCR was in versions such as 1.3 and 1.4, when the map was still not very detailed overall. Even if the developers had just added some more realistic vegetation, that would have made it look so much better. However, it is only Roblox, so maybe I'm being a little fussy as of course there are going to be some limitations. I also believe that the opportunity to start phasing out buy mode functionality with trains was there with the use of the Class 800. I was quite disappointed to find that this train is diesel only and you have to use it on diesel only mode. In fact, therefore the top speed of it in game should only be 110 miles per hour, similar to real life. Obviously I'm unsure how much extra work it would have taken to make it buy mode functionality, but I'm still disappointed that it wasn't there. Finally, another point I'd like to mention is the fact that we still haven't got any working overhead wires. Obviously I know that there are still many parts of the map without the new overhead electrification equipment, however version 2.0 seems like a new leaf had been turned over for the game, and therefore I believe that would have been the best opportunity to start adding in the ability to raise and lower pantographs before starting journeys. But all of this video is just my opinion, you're perfectly entitled to disagree with me. In fact, I'd be more than happy to hear your views down in the comments. Do you think this is a good update, or do you think that there are still many missed opportunities? However, that's all from me today. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And until next time, it's goodbye from me.